I outlined the glass with painter's tape outside and inside. Whoop! <laughs> you can see the mounted camera from the glare on the glass. <laughs> I wasn't sure whether to use a paintbrush or a sponge brush. You can do either. I like to paint with smaller brushes because it's a stress reliever for me, but by all means, you can grab any kind of brush. The first shelf I made, I used Varathane in the color Kona to stain it. I like how it turned out, however, I wanted this one to match my desk. This time, I am using my Wishing on a Star paint that I've used in previous projects, like fixing my IKEA drawer set, which is linked at the top right corner if you're interested. I love this paint. I'm obsessed with this color. It reminds me of a galaxy. I am what you call a slow painter. I like to take my time. That's why I jump cut or time lapse my painting processes a lot. I figure you probably don't want to sit through hours of me painting a wooden box. And as you can see, I am multitasking. I have my laptop out. I'm watching a couple streams and, um, you know, being supportive. I'm watching my husband uh, stream Elite Dangerous and I have a monster. So we're all good here. You may get paint on the hinges and that's okay. You can easily remove the paint or stain with nail polish remover and a cotton swab. I couldn't find my cotton swabs. I looked everywhere, but I did have cotton balls, so I did use that. It works the same, but I had to be more careful to just wipe the hinges and not the wood around it. My next step, probably the hardest part of the project for me, is cutting the shelves. I tried to find wood that was relatively the same measurements I would need. I found these pieces of wood from Woodpile and cut one and a half inches in width by one half inches in length. I will show you these measurements on the screen so you get a better look at them. I use hand tools to cut all my pieces of wood because I live in an apartment and most power tools are too loud. I encourage you not to use hand saws since they can be very dangerous working with small pieces like this. Using a table saw or even a jigsaw would make this step a lot faster and safer for you. At first, I tried using my 15 inch handsaw, but the teeth were too big and the cuts were a bit rugged and I could tell that um, some of the pieces of wood were kind of chipping off where I didn't want them to. So I switched to using my coping saw, which had smaller teeth and that seemed to cut them like butter. This coping saw I've had for at least six years and I've already had to um, super glue it together because it broke, but it still works the best. So I used it today. <laughs> Now that the shelves are measured and cut, we can drill our holes that will be used later to snake the LED lights through. I'm using a 1 8 drill bit to make my holes. Go ahead and drill holes on one side of the shelves. The last one I made, I drilled on both sides and ended up only using one drilled hole. I then took an X-Acto blade and scored the wood, then used my needle nose pliers to grab that chunk out. Now we have more wiggle space to fit our LEDs. This wood is actually pretty soft, so it didn't take much effort to do this. After I made some final adjustments to the shelves, I also made sure that the door closed while the shelves were inside. And then after that, I painted them. I went ahead and used an online ruler, which I will link down in the description. It helps to have a visual of the measurements in 1 16th of an inch and also in 1 8th inch markings. The first shelf needs extra space to accommodate the door frame, so I measured out 3 and 7 eighths inches from outside the box. Second and third shelves are 3 inches from each other. Again, I measured from the top of the shelf, not below it. Fourth shelf measured 3 and 5 eighths inches, leaving a 1 inch gap at the bottom for the battery pack to fit. I used clear Gorilla Glue for this project. The last one, I didn't read the label and ended up buying the Gorilla Glue that dries tan. It didn't look too great and was harder to mask up with the stain. So clear it is. This glue does not produce foam. It's good for indoor and outdoor use and dries clear. It also only takes two hours to completely dry. 
I noticed that as the glue was drying, it was expanding a little bit, making the door unable to shut all the way with the shelves inside. So, I placed a brick I happened to have laying around the apartment on top. Don't know how or why I had one, but it worked to have something heavy weighing it down. Alright, let's get started on the lights. I was actually debating whether to make this into a part 2, but then decided against it. These lights let off a warm glow, which I think will look good since the hardware we have for this box is brass. They also have a timer, which is nice. It saves you on batteries, and that way I don't have to worry about forgetting to shut them off. It took forever to unwind all the lights. Holy moly cannolis, folks. They kept getting stuck on my headset and my keyboard tray and everywhere else. Then at one point, I rolled on top of them with my chair. It was a struggle. Thankfully, we have fast forwarding capabilities, so you don't have to endure all that time. Once I located the end, I snaked it through the first shelf hole until it was taut. Here it is snaked through. I'm using earring backs that you can get at any craft store in the jewelry section. It seems they don't want to focus though for the camera. They are often sold in silver, black, or gold. I used two needle nose pliers to open the backs and later will close them on the lights. The ear backs are small enough for the wire to pass, but not the LED itself. I'll be using my favorite non-sponsored glue, Gorilla Glue, of course, in clear. Same stuff I use for the shelves. It's at this point I found out that moving the box to the side would help them to not move while they are drying. I forgot how gravity works for a split second. Before I glued them down, I made sure to open them all up first. This made it easier to pass the lights through. The glue dried in 20 minutes which is different than it normally does according to the instructions. On the side where the holes are drilled, I glued two earring backs per section, totaling out to eight. I moved the box upside down and proceeded to record gluing all of them down. I realized while editing that the only clip that sums up this process best was the last shelf. I spaced them out as I saw fit and then kept the spacing the same for every shelf. This was a bit tedious, but I wanted it to look uniform. Some of the backs needed a little more glue than others. I found out that the Gorilla Glue is actually better than Loctite for this project. I used Loctite on the other shadow box and more of the earring backs had to be re-glued after the lights were up. Here is where I started to snake my lights through the drilled holes. The holes were just the right size to fit the LEDs through, but not enough for anything else. I tried to leave in as much recorded clips of this as possible, but unfortunately the first shelf wasn't recorded and I also decided to swap from using my blue needle nose pliers to the yellow one simply because I was too worried that the blue one, also being a wire cutter, would accidentally cut the lights. Some of the holes had to be reopened a bit because when I painted them, 
I didn't check to make sure the paint didn't clump up in those areas. Let's see what it looks like all lighted up. Wow, that's bright! I'm so glad the new glasses I bought are transitional ones. The lights actually activated the tint. By the way, I'm a very messy person. My hubby has turned me into some sort of a grazer, so I have snacks everywhere. Last night, I couldn't stay away from the honey mustard combos. They were so good. So, um, there's my extra clump of lights. It's like a little ball of energy. As you can see, we went up and over, then looped the lights back to the hole and fed them through and repeated all the way up and then went all the way back down to the battery pack. It was kind of difficult to pass the lights through the hole a second time. Those holes are fairly small. At this point, the project has been completed. Look at this display. I am actually proud and feel accomplished. Yeah, I have an issue with feeling like I didn't do enough, but with this project, it was exactly what I envisioned it to look like. I found my two homemade pendulums and wanted to see what they looked like inside, and they looked so good. One is amethyst and the other is citrine. I have a crystal and mineral shop pretty close to me, so I get a lot of crystals from there. Plus, it really helps the local businesses. I made these a long time ago, but may get back into making them and possibly selling them. I am not good at putting prices on stuff, so I usually end up giving them away for free. The bottom is the perfect length for my pillars. That means I can get more in the future, right? The crystals look so well in this box. I may just take them out of the other one and house them in this one. I also am going to keep this box out on my desk. The other one will go in my bedroom. I have a lot of knickknacks that are sentimental to me. I went on a bit of a shopping spree and bought some brass embellishments. I found some small door latches and I think they go very well with the corner plaques I picked out. The corner plaques remind me of some sort of moth constellation. The door latches came with three sets and some screws that I'm probably going to lose later. Hopefully I don't drop any. It would be like stepping on a Lego. Ouch. The corner plaques are super flat, and the door to the shadow box has a bit of an angle to it, so I had to bend them a little bit to fit better. The pieces were very easy to bend with just my fingers, so I opted out of using the pliers. Thinking overall, they may have just done a lot of more damage than doing good. I'm trying to show you the difference in how curved it is, but it's not working the way I thought it would. I was afraid to tap those tiny nails into my door. It has glass, and I didn't want to crack it after all this work. I ended up cutting a small round piece of felt and using painter's tape to stick it on the bottom of my hammer. No need for a rubber mallet. Although, a rubber mallet would probably be better. It still got the job done though. Now for the door latch. It was simple. I just measured the box and found the middle which was 7.5 inches. I marked my holes with a white paint pen and didn't even have to use a drill. The wood was soft enough for the screws to go in with just the screwdriver. Shake test! Alright folks, that's a fin, cut, we're done, here it is, all done. Here it is in the light, I'm just gonna go down. I know my lighting's not that great, but this is its new home on my desk. This is it open, and I think it turned out great, and then here it is at night time. There it is, folks, at night. I love this. It's super bright, though. Like, th these lights are supposed to be, 
like the not so bright ones, but they really ended up super bright, so they're they're glistening on this screen here. But yeah, this is what it looks like. I'm very happy for this. It turned out great. I have more color organized. I can shut my door. You can't see the lights at all, like the, the remainder of the lights. You can't see that little ball of energy. Yeah, it's real nice. It's, it's actually, it actually works out as a really good lamp for when I don't want the actual lamp on. I think we will end the video here, folks. If you're still watching and have any questions or feedback, feel free to drop them in the comments below, and I will do my best to answer all of them. As always, thank you for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to view my content. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you want to see more of this content, please consider subscribing. We do a lot of different stuff on this channel. Hope you have a great rest of your week. Take care and see you later!